Immersive Technology for Non-Gaming and Entertainment. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Marco Santoso, and I'm an assistant professor at Digital World Institute at University of Florida. And my research interest is in XR applied research for non-gaming and entertainment field. Now I'm going to start this presentation by introducing you about immersive technology. So immersive technology is a technology that falls under 3D display field. Inside the 3D display field, there are four big guys, namely stereoscopic, AR, VR, integral image, and holographic. And to simply define about AR, VR, I usually use virtual continuum, firstly introduced by Paul Milgram and uh, Fumio Kisino back in 1994. Basically, as you can see in this uh, diagram, virtual continuum span from left to right. We start with the real environment, followed by augmented reality, augmented virtuality, or uh, VR and virtual environment. And Robert Asuma, back in 1997, gave us a very uh, easy to remember definition. VR is basically completely immersed a user inside a synthetic environment, meanwhile an AR, is a technology that all users to see the real world with virtual object superimposed upon or composited in the real world. And AR is a system that have the following three characteristics, combines real and virtual, interactive in real time, and registered in three-dimensional space. Trend and directions. The first trend is about multiverse, aka uh, multiple universe. So basically, this is the, the, the time when we have the real world, our real world, and then we have the digital version of our real world, and finally we cannot try to augment our physical world with some in, uh, digital informations. And then, believe it or not, we actually already start the process to build this multiverse. For example, like in our current device, mostly we have three cameras on uh, on the back side. So one of the camera actually, uh, it has the function to scan the room something like this and then in the latest version of google map we can actually directly render the arrow the direction directly on the street the second trend is about digital data transaction so basically we try to combine ar vr with a blockchain or digital currency so that we can have uh, the the safe way to to claim the ownership of some uh, virtual stuff Cloud AR, basically the idea of we throw all of the digital data on the cloud and then we can pull the required informations on, on your phone so that we can save some uh, batteries, we can, we can reduce the computational power on the, on the phone. And the last uh, cool trends from AR VR is about social VR. So this is uh, happening when Facebook start to acquire uh, Oculus, so basically once you put the headset, instead of just block your view and then replace it with the virtual environment, you can basically meet the other VR users from the other place and you can, uh, we can have the real-time interaction. Some cool features about AR VR. The first one is the teleportation. So this is when you put the, the headset and then you can actually teleport yourself or your user to the new world either this is an uh, existed world or just a uh, fantasy world, something like this. And then the other one is the spatial experience. So AR VR is the technology that can display the three-dimensional data slash information in the 3 3D uh, form. Unlike the whatever uh, media that we have, we actually compress the three-dimensional data into two-dimensional uh, platform like uh, pictures, photo or video, but in AR VR, we can actually have the uh, follow metric data rendered in front of our eyes. And the, the other one is the experiential simulation. The latest VR headset, it's usually occupied with the six degree of uh, freedom controller. And then we can also see the virtual object in three dimensional uh, form. So it means we can have the uh, experiential uh, simulation with AR VR. And then furthermore, um, uh, the next present the next presenter will 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 inform about uh, how we combine couple things in one of uh, our VR project. Thank you so much.
If you have any questions, feel free to reach me at marcus.santoso at ufl.edu. Hi, everyone. My name is Cortino Sukocho from the University of uh, Illinois at Chicago. And I'm working on this project with Dr. Marcus Santoso from the University of Florida. Today, I'm going to present some updates regarding our projects. Coronavirus pandemic has modified our daily life and create a new normal. For example, many people around the globe are staying home and limiting their physical and social contact. Families, friends, teachers, students, professionals connect via Zoom and spend countless hours talking on the screen. People were only talking and staring on the screen with minimum interaction and collaborative work. Social VR has become a unique platform for social connection. Social VR allows us to learn and build meaningful relationships with others by creating projects together versus just watching uh, only from the screen. This new platform uh, helps people feel more present with each other, even when they are apart, whether they are at work or play. Further, social VR has advantages over video conferencing because the participants in the, are in the same virtual space. Therefore, uh, they can share and work together in real time in a truly collaborative manner. We also can import custom environments for 3D objects and we can work together via interactive uh, whiteboards. Recently, we have created a social VR for dental implant surgery training. Since all users are connected through an internet connection, there's no location or distance barrier to prevent this project's communal experience. This learning platform allows learners and teachers an opportunity to participate in a virtual environment uh, to interact with the target simultaneously and build, view, relay, and receive information. This allows social interaction without being physically in the same environment. In this virtual room, the faculty can demonstrate the implant surgical procedures while the student observe in the shared virtual dental clinic or vice versa. Both users can interact visually and verbally. Students' engagement and collaboration can be encouraged, particularly for shy students. The learning process and assessment can be conducted via synchronous or asynchronous methods since the training uh, can also be recorded. A standardist patient is a patient actor who has been trained uh, to consistently portray a specific patient role outlined by a script devised by a topic content experts. However, the conventional standardized patient come with some limitations. Another special require real-time personal interactions between student and patient. The standard patient session uh, has limited access uh, and also a location and time dependent as well. Further, we should not forget about the necessary human and physical resources associated with their use. Virtual standard patient has been commonly used in medical education to allow students for a unique approach in assessing essential skills such as history, take, history taking and clinical decision making. However, uh, virtual standard space has not been utilized in dental education. We have recently uh, successfully de developed a virtual dental standard space application that would enable dental students to practice their history taking, uh, communication skills, and empathy for patients. This application can also provide a learning tool that works for both off-site and on-site facilities. Uh, we have created two applications. The first one is open to reality and the other one is virtual uh, reality. We will have time to discuss that. Let's start with updating your medical history. I will now take your blood pressure. I'm sorry, but this is the clinic's protocol. Oh, okay, fine. Good morning, Mr. Andrews. Is it? I've been coming here for two years and I still don't have proper teeth. This is my student conducting a community service to the elderly population who may need implant treatment. During this activity, we usually bring one or two uh, typodons for patient education. However, a regular typodon is not only expensive, but also not interactive. 
In this new AR application, we have uh, created a e type on that is more interactive and can provide safe information regarding implant parts and sequences. So what is next? Currently, we are working on the use of uh, VR gloves and haptic machines to perform dental clinical procedures such as uh, tooth preparation. We hope to update you regarding the progress sometimes in the summer. Thank you very much for your attention. Hi, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Ahmed Mahrous, and I'll be presenting on augmented reality in dental education. Augmented reality involves creating virtual objects in the world around you when looking through a screen. That screen could be a screen of an augmented reality headset or a screen of a tablet or a phone. And that might look familiar because it is. You've seen that in the form of Instagram and Snapchat filters, which begs the question, is this a fad? Let's take a look at the numbers. A recent market watch estimation estimates that dental implants will be worth 6.8 billion by the year 2025. Market watch also estimates that augmented reality will be worth 50 billion by the year 2025. When you look at who's investing, you'll see that it's all the big tech companies out there. If you're still not convinced, maybe Mark Zuckerberg can convince you. Let's talk about augmented reality. The goal here is to develop some normal size, nice looking glasses uh, that you can wear all day and interact with holograms, digital objects, and information uh, while still being present with the people and world around you. Microsoft and Amazon have both created their own augmented reality headsets. And Google is working on the infrastructure of AR, making it easier to develop more augmented reality applications in the future. And Apple has filed multiple patents on what they call the Apple Glass, which is slated to replace the iPhone in the future. When you look at AR in healthcare, you see a global startup hub indicating that there's over 576 AR healthcare applications in year 2020 alone. Most notably, Senti AR and Insight that help surgeons undergo their delicate surgeries. So we decided to do augmented reality in dental education. Using mostly free applications, we create a code that will allow us to use our 3D models in AR. And here's a video demonstrating how it works. In this video, you saw the application running on an iPhone used alongside a generic AR VR headset. The application uses AR anchors to control the 3D models. In the video, the anchors were diagrams on a disc. Those anchors can also be set on your hand or pictures on a phone. The application employs a stereoscopic view to allow for the realistic depth perception with two images that come together in the brain to create a true 3D image. We've made some preliminary studies with findings indicating increased interest in technology. The possibilities include viewing AR models incorporated in reading material and lectures, or simply swiping through a phone to reveal AR objects. But perhaps the most interesting proposition is to have a hybrid virtual physical model that allows for a very realistic patient encounter. Couple that with a haptic feedback glove, you'll have a very realistic patient on your hands. And you'll think about how students learn and how they gain experience. You'll see the term associative learning 
Associative learning is the process by which multiple stimuli of a given experience, like tactile, sound, emotion, visual simulation, and facial recognition, can come together in the brain to create a lasting memory or experience. And this is where AR can come in. By creating a virtual object in a real space, it can simulate reality and trigger various stimuli in the brain to create a more profound experience. So, the take home message for our presentations is that AR and VR are developing fast. AR and VR have the potential to create more immersive simulations, and AR and VR have the potential to engage students in associative learning. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation today and we are open for questions.